Good morning everyone. Guess who? Me again. 30 day challenge. So we're now on to our third page tutorial. Um, I'm just going to show you what page we're going to be creating today. And I've got to avoid knocking the camera as well as I'm showing you this. So I've moved it slightly. Okay, so today we are going to be making these tags. So they are flip tags. And then it has its opposite page where, Carol? There. And then that's the other side. All right, so we're going to be making those two sets of tags. Okay. Easy peasy one this today, but there are options. Okay, so I am starting off with a piece of card with those images for the magazine. Put that out of the way. I'm using that piece of card to go with that image from the digital kit Garden Fresh. I think on one of the videos I called it Fresh Garden. It's not, it's Garden Fresh. Um, that's the actual page that's on the digital kit and with the program that I used and this is very difficult to kind of share this info with you because everyone has different ways in which they print these digital images um, but on my particular program that I use which apparently is no longer available um, I'm able to reduce the image size so that I can get one printed on that side and one printed on that side so hence the I can get four, well, two of those images onto the page. So it gives me four separate things to use for the tags. You will have to experiment with your own um, printing program to see how that actually works. So I'm afraid I can't advise you on that one. I'm going to demonstrate with this one first. So... As you can see from the images, it takes over the whole width of the magazine page and it takes over the whole length of the magazine page. And luckily for me, if we have a look, they fit exactly a sheet of A4 card. Now you will need card for this and not paper because paper will be too flimsy and you don't want it too thick. So I would say absolute maximum thickness of card for this would be 210 GSM. So, where's my cutter? There we go. And as I said, I'm using A4 card, so you'll need to alter this to suit your own paper size. And again, if you're using the images from the magazine, you may need to trim these down to size. All right. But basically, all I'm going to do is I'm going to chop this in half. I'll just get my ruler because I was organised and tidied up after myself last night. Crazy woman. <laughs> so the width of this is eight and a quarter. Oh, sorry, you can't see that, can you? Eight and a quarter inches. And I want to cut it in half. So that makes it four and one eighth. Now, one of the things I would say is that if I just cut this in half and leave it as it is, there could be a tendency that when they're sitting side by side, they could end up catching a little. So I'm actually going to trim them down just a little bit further so that they will do that and that they won't catch. All right. If I, as I say, if I cut it down the middle, if I don't put it up just right when I put it in the journal and stitch it together, they could do that. And we don't want it doing that. We want it doing that. So whilst that says four and one eighth, I'm actually going to cut it down to four inch so that I know then that there will be that little gap between each of the tags as they swing. Now, the measurements, as I say, that I'm giving you is for my A4 paper. You'll need to adjust to your own size. So as you can see, I've trimmed that off. So we've got that much of a gap then between those two pieces. And that, my friends, is it. That's all you need to do. Cut a piece of card in half and fold it in half. In fact, I want it that way. No, I don't want it that way. Because one side of my card has got a texture to it. And the other side is smooth. I want my bone folder. Where's my bone folder gone? 
fucked up. Oh, see, I wasn't that organised. I didn't put that away. Don't know where that's gone. I know. Oh, we'll use this one. Aren't you enjoying just watching that bit of card? There we go. All right. Phew. There we go. All right. So, just going to use my bone of filter. Oh, it's there. Look. You could have told me it's right there. Mind you, you probably can't see that on the screen. Now, I want the smooth side up because that's the side that I'm going to put the images onto because I want the textured side visible on the other side my blades are just beginning to go in my cutter and they're just giving me a slightly rough edge but I can deal with that later now the top of this because it's meant to be a tag you can do a tag shape if you wish and one of the things I've got is I've got a little tiny wallet plastic wallet with journal templates in this isn't all of them. I've taken some out so that we're not totally bamboozled with all of my templates. So I've got my tag top templates here, look. So that if I wanted to do a fancy top, then I could do. Now I could use a die cutter or I could just draw around a template. And a template can be um, if you've bought digital kits before and they've used an unusual shaped tag, then you could cut one out and, and keep that as your template. Um, this one is just a simple cutting off, off of the angles. And I will show you on a spare bit of card. That, that's easy to do. So you just choose the angle that you want by moving your scissors around until you get the angle that you want. Snip that off. And then this bit that you snipped off, flip it over. So it was there. And if you flip it over and stick that up in that corner and cut it, it will end up being the same angle. So that and that is now the same angle as each other. Okay. But what you could do, as I say, is if you don't trust yourself to do that, then you could use a template, use a pencil. Don't tell me I put my pencil away as well. Oh, I have millions of pencils. Hang on. That's really trouble, isn't it? Oh, talk about being organised. So you could put your template on there and just draw around it and then cut now as you can see this piece of card is too wide for this piece of card that's underneath but if i just then shift that across i can then use the other side so it doesn't need to be the exact same size you just move it across the same goes for this one if i want you to do a fancy topped one i could place that in that corner draw around that bit and then place it in the opposite corner and draw around that bit and then cut that out same with that one and there and the same with this one there but I would need to ignore that little point up there draw around that shift it across draw around that and I would say to cut the two pieces out separately because to try and cut through that thickness of card when you've done something fancier then it will be difficult and the card will shift so you need to do that carefully of course if you've got a die cutting machine you could just use any kind of die that you've got that will create a fancy top and do that instead now whilst I've used a sheet of A4 card you might not have A4 card but you might have a greetings card so this is a card that comes with the envelopes pack um, and all you need to do because it's already folded is just cut that in half and you've got yourself exactly the same as what I've just created there. So have a look through your card packs and see if there's anything in amongst those that you want to use rather than using sheets of A4 card. 
all I'm then going to do is cut out my images. Do 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 cutter. Right, fingers crossed because as I say my blade's starting to go. So I'm just going to cut it down the middle. Now remember I cut that card slightly smaller. So as you can see where I've cut it there, it just extends beyond the four inch side. So I need to look at each individual design and decide which bit I'm going to trim the excess off. Now if I trim the excess off that, I'm cutting off her sleeve and then there's a load of blank over here. So I'm going to trim the excess off the blank bit. If I look at this image, again, if I trim the excess off that bit, I'm cutting off all the interesting bit of the newspaper and her hand, whereas down this bit, it's just other people that I can see in the background. So I'll trim that bit off there. So I'm just going to completely trim a part off that side. And then cut the two... Sorry, I no, you can't always see that bit. Cut the two in half. I'm going to do the same with this one. Again, have a look at it again. So I could trim off that. I'm not going to get rid of anything that's interesting. And if I have a look at this one, I could actually trim a little bit off that or a little bit off that side. There's more uninteresting stuff on this side, so I'm going to cut the two in half first. I also need to trim off that little bit there because that's where it... Ah, it just snagged. I knew it was going to do that. Let me just catch it with my scissors. This is because my blade's running blunt. Because that was the part that was, that was the serrated edge of where the page was in the magazine. And I'm going to do it with my scissors. I want to keep snagging. So I just need to trim that bit off there. And just trim that serrated edge off. Right, so I'm going to trim the little bit of excess off there. And I don't mind cutting it slightly smaller than the width of the tag. I think I cut that a bit skew if. Yeah, that was as straight as a donkey's hind leg. Let's see if I do it slowly. Ooh, that's it. It doesn't matter if the image is slightly narrower than the width of the card tag because that will then act as a, a border around the edge of the design. That's, I'm just going to trim a bit off that too. And then I've got my four images. And if I sit them on top, I can see that I probably need to trim a little bit off the length of that one. And again, I don't want to trim off this interesting bit. So I'm going to trim a bit off the bottom there because we want to show if we're adding this picture as a pocket because we love a pocket um, we want to show that there's some access into the top of the pocket there. All right, so I'm happy with that. And then I'm going to do that one with that one. Yeah, so I can cut those now the same size. So there's no point having them different sizes when they're sitting side by side. So those two will sit there like that and they will line up. Now the other thing that I could do is I could corner round with a punch or a fancy corner punch or an inverted corner punch on those. You could even do the same on the corner of what will be forming the tag. And then I'll stick those two images on there. Now if I have a look at these two. Yeah, one's already shorter than the other. So I 
just trim off that bit of excess off the bottom there. Yep, happy with that. So, if I open that up and open that up, I will have her on there. I will have her on there. And I will have her on there. Note the direction with which I'm placing them. And in fact, I can see that I need to take a little bit more off the width and a little bit more off the length on this one. So we'll take a smidgen off that and a smidgen off the tree. Now I want this one to be the same length, so I'll line those up like that. So I know that they're the same length, and I might take it off that edge. See, I don't see. I'm not very good at doing the measuring thing. I just line it up and. Fudge it. And then those two will sit on there like that. I could also use my circle punch, insert it so that the punch is upside down and insert my image and then punch on there so it would then give me a thumb hole. Now because the image is so close to the edge of the paper here I'm not going to do that on this. I probably will corner round or invert punch. What did I do on the other one? Let's have a look. Oh I inverted punched on those look so that it's got the inverted punch there. So I might do something different on this one I think. I might do the corner rounded one. And then I would just stick those on there. Note though that they are sat in opposite directions to each other. And you also don't want to glue this image right next to that crease mark. We're also only going to apply glue on the back side of these images down there, across there and up there so that it leaves the top open to be able to make the pocket. I'll stick and I'm going to use my PVA glue for this because it's a slightly stronger glue than the Collal um, because this paper is going to have a little bit of movement on it. In fact, let me corner punch first because that's what I said I was going to do. And sometimes you'll find that if your paper's really thin, it doesn't give you a nice corner punch. Just add a second piece of paper in there with it as well. Um, a um, scrap, that's the word I was looking for, a scrap piece of paper. So it doesn't matter that you're punching it because it sometimes likes the slightly thicker paper to punch. Okay, so place glue. Sorry, a mine shot. Down there. And as you can see, I like using these bottles with the little thin nibs. And this is where the little thin nib comes into play. Because you only want a thin layer of glue, not a big thick globule. I'll leave that for a second to just set off a little. So I do find that just leaving it sometimes... It just forms a little bit of a skin on the outer layer of the glue. So it means that when you apply that little bit of pressure, it's not going to ooze out quite as much as if you did it now when it hasn't got a bit of skin on it. But obviously you can't leave it too long, otherwise it will just dry out and won't be sticky glue at all. Okay, just apply a light bit of pressure, 
so I can come back to that and apply a bit more pressure in a second and then make sure that this one is the opposite way on that we're not right up next to that crease and there we go so then when you insert it in your signature you insert by lifting up the remaining pages place it in bend it round so then you've got one on that side now you might decide to just have one and then place the other one somewhere else if you want to have the two though then you need one lower one higher and then make sure that they just sit side by side nicely with a fraction of a gap between the two so then you can flip without them encroaching on each other now the other thing that i did on this original one as well and again this is optional and up to you but on the back of these tags i did a die cut um, now this particular die cut it only cuts that bit out and then leaves that bit a hole on the page so I had to physically cut that out by hand and then I just placed used my put some glue on some plastic put my finger in the glue and rubbed the glue over the back of just this part of the die cut because I wanted to leave it so that this part here wasn't stuck down so that I could place something under there so it then becomes a tuck. You don't have to do that. You could add a tab to the top. You could add another little pocket on the back of that if you wanted. So the option is yours on that. So pretend I've stuck those pictures on. Just want to save a little bit of time and I wrap that around that page so come on shape yourself there we go so can you see look there's a small gap between the two so it means that when I insert those I can flip them quite comfortably and again what I would then do is I would use a paper clip on this side and also on the back side to hold those tags in place one at the top and one at the bottom so it's exactly the same technique for the digital image in that I'm going to cut this in half with a little bit of excess trimmed off first so that it makes it slightly narrower and then I'm going to cut round these and stick these top and bottom just in exactly the same way as I did with the magazine I'm leaving it at that for now because I'm coming up to time and I'll show you the completed versions of these in the next video at the beginning of the next video right have fun and I'll see you later Ta -ra.